What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Today, I'm here to tell you that Picarom is still one of the best decks in standard format. We're going to go over my current list. Not much has changed, but we'll chat a little bit about the list and then go into some gameplay on PTCGO with the deck. Before we get into it, though, shout out to PoTownStore.com, the best place for you to get PTCGO codes, and be sure to use code CELIO for 5% off. Also, make sure you subscribe to this channel for daily Pokemon TCG content. So Picaram has been around for a while, and I do hope you look at this video knowing that I objectively evaluate Picaram. I kind of despise tag teams, and I have not liked Picaram for the majority of its lifespan in standard format. Uh, but recently, during the Players' Cup 3 qualifiers, I realized that Picaram was probably the best deck in the format and that was the deck I needed to be playing so I played that for all my qualifiers. Picaram has not changed very much at all although the Urshifu decks have come out. Uh, Rapid Strike Urshifu is like a fine matchup for Picaram. It's not the matchup you want to see but it's it doesn't just wipe Picaram off of the face of the earth like some people thought it might. Picaram is just very adaptable, and honestly, the list didn't even need to adapt uh, because of Mewtwo just being one of the core parts of Picaram these days. So this deck, uh, the focus of this deck is to start off with Bolt Ton V's Electrify to accelerate some lightning energy, namely to a Picaram or a Mewtwo and Mew. From there, Mewtwo and Mew can use either Full Blitz or Tag Bolt or Tandem Shock or Lightning Ride. It gives you a lot of options to work with. You'll typically want your opponent to knock out a Bolt Tund, then knock out a Tag Team. Then you stamp them to one and Tandem Shock paralyze them and then finish it off the game from there after you've essentially stamp locked them. Uh, Crushing Hammer and Yell Grunt help circumvent some of your worst matchups like Eternatus. Eternatus is a 340 HP Pokemon that swings 270 for 2 energy. That means just 2 manual attachments and they're knocking out Mewtwo, they're knocking out Picaram, they're knocking out Bolton and Raichu Raichu. So on, if just in a vacuum, looking at it that way, that sounds like an absolutely awful matchup. But it's actually pretty close once you add in the Crushing Hammers and the Yell Grunts because they just manually attach energy. So if you can ruin their energy plans, then you have more time to attack and it's like you can use a full blitz for free or a tag bolt for free or tandem shock for free. Uh, you have that turn without them hitting you if you can get the energy denial going early. So energy denial, reset stamp, chaotic swell, Marnie, and tandem shock. While this deck seems very aggressive, it's actually one of the most disruptive decks in standard format between paralyzing and hand disruption and energy energy disruption and also resource disruption with Chaotic Swell stopping things like Welder decks from playing Giant Hearth into play or bumping their Giant Hearth and then they can't put another one in next turn. So this deck kind of has it all. It has aggression, it has bench damage, it has tactics it has disruption it has type coverage even uh mewtwo and mew is a big reason why picaram can survive the hits that are coming at it because colossal came out and picaram stayed best deck in format because mewtwo and mew made it fine versus colossal the urshifus come out they're weak to mewtwo now sure the urshifu decks are playing jirachi gx so that's something you have to be mindful of so get your boss's orders ready for when the jirachi comes down just pop it with tandem shock or tag bolt and then you're back in order to be uh hitting urshifu for weakness so here's the list like i said it has not changed much i don't think it will change much i don't think it should change much Pikaram is one of the best decks in format i don't think i will be ranking this anywhere below the top three decks for the majority of battle styles. The lowest it would go is top five. I really don't think it will go lower than top five, but if I had a bet, it won't go lower than the, one of, being one of the top three decks of the format because it's adaptable, it's versatile, uh, good players will play it well, and it gives you those options. There's six very good attacks in the deck, 
eight or maybe even 10 if you want to count each attack as a different one being copied by mute to Mew because you have electrify bolt storm you have full blitz tag bolt and you have tandem shock lightning ride and then four of those attacks can be copied by mute to which other decks don't have you have victini with max victory you have eternatus with dread end you have sent scorch with uh sent or whatever it's called you have these decks with one maybe a backup attack but this deck has six uh six attacks and spread out between four different attackers and two different types it just has so much coverage and so much options so that uh, so many options that uh players that are uh very good and have a game sense and can uh formulate a line of play and then act upon it are going to typically do pretty well with pika rom so it's a deck that i continue to see have a lot of success be played at high levels of competition and also be popular so i played some games on the ptcgo ladder with this list uh the first one's a bit of a dud uh, but i left it in there just because of some of the things i was talking about throughout the beginning of the game and then the second game is very exciting one so i hope you enjoyed that gameplay stick around for that and like i said be sure to subscribe to the channel for daily content also make sure you leave a like and a comment to help out the video and if you're in need of ptcgo codes potownstore.com is the place to go and be sure to use code celio for five percent off over there i hope you enjoy the rest of the video and have a great day thanks for watching i'll see you next time here on celio's network when the coin flip going second playing against fighting deck fighting sleeves Ooh, starting the den not what we want but we got supporters to draw cards with so Pikaram can overcome a start like this because Pikaram is cracked still so Top deck into Bolt Ton would be absolutely insane. Or top deck into Quick Ball. But we can just dump this hand with the research. Look for Bolt Ton, Switcher Balloon, Energy, U2 or Peak. Starting Mew. Like I said, Fighting Deck, Fighting Sleeves. Could be an Urshifu deck, Colossal deck. Could just have Fighting Sleeves and not even be a Fighting deck. Okay, so it's Rapid Strike Urshifu. And this is completely beatable for Pika Rom. Okay, Rapid Strike Urshi with the Octillery line in it. As opposed to the Jirachi build. They got everything they need, so I don't think they had to Dedene here. Oh gosh. Okay, no, they definitely didn't need to Dedene. That's 100% incorrect. Yeah, they had a really good hand. They got Octillery, Evo, Incense, Quick Ball, and then they just dumped it all. I don't get that. Like, I could just Marnie them, and then the Denny is wasted, so that was really bad. Heads on Hammer's great. We're just gonna dump this hand, look for Bolt Ton Switch, Energy Peak. Uh, we didn't get any of that. So do I dump this hand now? Yeah. Probat would only draw me one card, so we're not even gonna bother with that. All right, give me switch. Give me switch your balloon. Ah, almost. It would have been very good if Crobat had didn't have to get dumped without the den. Unfortunately, it did though. Okay, Marnie. There's the switch I wanted. Oh, Telescopic Sight is really good in this matchup for them. They're 
gonna set up damage with Mew. That's really, that's really, really good. All right, I want to quick ball away whatever I top deck for Coco. Oh, wait, 30 on that. They could have put 10 and 10 on the Denny's and then just pop to the Denny's. Okay, we could top deck Coco. That's beautiful. Oh, and they scooped. Huh. That was quite the game. Okay, on to the next. They were making a bunch of missteps that game, but like I've I'm pretty sure they had me because my start was just so scuffed up. I definitely think they had me there. When the coin flip goes second. Okay, we got a moly. Going seconds, very, very good. Oh, beautiful. And nice. That's what I want to see with Pikaram. Starting the lax. Okay. Guru? Is this Decidueye? No, it's not Decidueye. It's Spear Tomb with a Snorlax in it. Very interesting. When I saw the, uh, the lax, I thought it was going to be Desi. Okay, so... This matchup... I need to be as aggressive as possible. I think I'll speed lightning prior to quick ball. I was thinking about setting up a Coco Prism as an attacker, but Coco is prized. So I won't be doing that. I don't even think Yelgrunt hurts them because they'll just reattach energy and they don't need to get energy down ahead of time. I'll Marnie and look for Swell, I guess. And Hammer. Three Hammers in deck. Swell in deck. Stamp could be useful later on. them to four we'll have to see what that can do for me
right now they're doing 130 to me they can bump that up to uh 160 by moving the damage with jinx all right they're up to 190 so all they need to do is switch out and they'll knock out bolt hunt couple factors that go into this are they playing mew and are they playing mimic you with shadow box because i could get them with a tag bolt Okay, there's their switch so they can get the knockout on bolt tund and i do have primate wisdom and they have snorlax but that needs to end their turn so they're not really stamp proofed per se so if they knock out bolt tund then you two mew i can stamp them to one hopefully Getting Coco out of the prizes might be useful for making a tag bolt happen. Crushing Hammer is no good because I'm already knocking the active out. Cut down. I just need energy. Okay, there's energy, but nothing else. So I probably just full blitz to the mute two. I do have tag switch in deck, so I could full blitz to peak. And that also gives me time to take care of a Mew if there's... Yeah, I think Full Blitz to peak. Let's see how many energy are in the deck first. That could also matter. Okay, there's enough energy in the deck that Full Blitz to peak, uh, I think, is correct. Just a note, if um if Spear Tomb and Mad Party, if these kind of decks become like a real threat, then uh Vika Volt is just such a strong tech. Cause like if I knocked out that Spear Tomb with Vika Volt last turn, they're not doing anything this turn. They this deck survives off of switches and ropes and nets and quick balls. So I set up Picaron because if they end up taking a knockout, I'd rather them knock out three prizes instead of two. I want them to go down to one prize. So right now they're swinging 190. That wasn't what they wanted, I don't think. Oh, they need energy. We're sending the Mewtwo back up. They still need energy.
Okay, so they whipped energy. That's huge. Uh, we'll stamp them to four. Sure. Okay, so we have the Dene in the deck. Um, I have two research, two Marnie. I have double Cherish Ball and Radar and the Dene. So I think it's better to research here. Although if I hit Tag Switch, I want a Tag Bolt and then a boss up uh, one of the tombs to knock out both tombs at once would be really good. But I think if I Tag Bolt in general, I'm going to be looking okay. But going for the the Dene into tag switch plus boss is very very enticing they do have three bosses yeah i think i'm going to Dene here just because that play is so enticing okay didn't get it We don't need to see this off the Marnie because we already did that and we have a full bench, so I'll just Marnie. Still no tag switch. We have our other stamp in the deck. It is at the bottom of the deck though. Oh, there's Mew. So now we need to hit a boss. Well, I have three boss in the deck and I know none of them are at the bottom like five-ish cards of the deck because of my last Marnie. There's three boss in like the top 14 cards of the deck. A top deck boss isn't the most unlikely thing. They also are not knocking out the Mewtwo yet. Um, I forget if they building sp if they built Spite yet. Okay, yeah, they built Spite. It looks like or that could be the other Spirit Tomb that built Spite. Hopefully the top of the deck is either boss or something to shuffle up the deck so I can Marnie into stamp. Actually, wait, no, I if it's boss, I also have to hit heads on crushing hammer. So I think the better case is that it's something to shuffle up the deck.
Because I believe the second stamp is at the bottom from the last Marnie. They might not knock out this Mewtwo. That'll be really rough for them. Oh no, they can with Jinx. They saw the play. Okay. Yep, there's knockout. Okay. Top deck, Raichu, Raichu, that's not gonna help. These cards really don't help much. So they're down two switch, three rope, three net. They got a couple switch and one rope and one net left. They have energy now on the spirit tomb. They could build spite, move in and build spite and then move a damage to go up to 70 on them. They could probably make it happen. They have the energy, which is like one of the most important parts of it, but they do only have the four outs to getting Jirachi out of there. The net double switch in one rope, assuming that they're playing four of each of them. Oh, Bird Keeper as well. Marnie kind of stinks because I have boss in my hand, but actually, yeah, like I said earlier, crushing hammer plus boss would be exactly what I need, but right now, honestly, I might just have to keep knocking out spirit tombs and hoping they can't set up successive spirit tombs. Because they benched the Mew at the perfect time. Hmm. Or a choreo. What I could do if they don't win this turn. Let's see. If they don't win here. I can hammer, stamp, cherish ball for boss, knock out the Oracorio, and hope they don't get an energy off of stamp to one plus Jirachi slash Guru. I could also potentially attach tag switch, I think, right? No, I don't have any energy left. And Coco's still prized.
It wouldn't matter because if they get an energy on Mew, it's still knockout. So if this is, I, I guess switching is always correct, just because this has air balloon and spike moth isn't out. Hey, yeah, there's the play. Guess I'm doing it. All they need is an energy. This was very close. Quick ball, no. Ah, uh, uh, it's not looking good. The stamp the one quick ball. Uh, it looks like they're going to be using a draw supporter here. For one of them, their energies. Their odds are looking very good. Yeah. Oh my god, that was well played on both of our parts, but ah, oh, the stamp the quick ball always hurts. GG. That was a really good game.